Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Taru Taru. This episode is going to be focused on doing the beginnings of questing and focusing on our very first quest on the Records of Eminence. And the reason you want to do this also, by the way, is because this is the main storyline. As you go through Records of Eminence, or ROE, you'll be able to string together all of the story quests all the way through to the very end of the game and be relatively up to date with uh, what you need. Also, you'll get EXP boosts. If that doesn't sound like a win, then I don't know what does. So, we gotta talk to Lady over here, Lady Pants. Felm Job Jobazar. Jabazat. Jubizite. Congratulations! Oh, if only I were as lucky as you. Here goes nothing. You're the 11,111th person to ever visit this square. To honor this crowning achievement, we're prepared to offer you a hefty reward. How hefty are we talking? They say the curiosity killed the cat, but I can assure you that's not the case. Now to peel back the veritable curtain on your commemorative prize. Ta-da! It's a memorandal! Aren't you a rapture now? The memorandal nods in agreement. This is no ordinary run-of-the-mill doll. I'll have you know, it's imbued with sorcery and engraves your records of eminence. Exploits upon itself. Now that's a handy, dandy tool, if I've ever heard of one. Um, I've always wanted one of those. I mean, records of eminence? What? You really haven't heard? I thought everyone had heard. It may come as a surprise to you, but you're already participating in Records of Eminence. Yes, indeed. By talking to me, you've cleared your first objective. That means you eventually get another present, Sparks of Eminence, which act as a quantifier of your grandeur. Anyway, now that you know the ropes, it's time to try it out yourself. Just sink your fangs into any of the short quests in the objective list under the Records of Eminence part of the quest menu. Easier than scooping fish from a bowl, right? Certain objectives can be repeated too, as so there'll be more to try than there are cats in a clouder. Once you accure, accrue enough sparks from completing objectives, come talk to me for a saucer of good stuff. Uh-oh, I don't know how you managed to sneak this past me, but you're as weak as a kitten. Quit pissy f <laughs> Quit pussyfooting around and talk to Salele. She'll help. Uh, she'll help you brush up on your basics for free. Speaking of good stuff, your memoranda is top-notch, so I'm going to need 11,111 gil for it. Not convinced it's worth the price? Okay then, watch this. With a simple clap of the hands, it disappears like magic. That's the power of arcane bloodity blood at its finest. So yeah, there's no way I could entrust something so amazing to you for free. Pay up, bitch. Aw oh, shit, um, I've only got cat calls for you, dude. Ah, fine. Huh, why am I giving up so easily? Because the doll's already registered to you. If you're not going to give me money, there's nothing I can do about it. The Memorandal nods in agreement. Yeah! All right. As a first-time bonus, you receive 300 Sparks of Eminence for a total of 300. Excellent. Unfortunately, we can't get spells through Sparks of Eminence. Wouldn't that just be the best thing ever? Uh, so we'll have to make money somehow through Sparks of Eminence by essentially purchasing shields and stuff, but really you want to at least gear yourself up a little bit. 
Uh, I think if we scroll on down to 71 to 98, and we go over to the last page or something. I think it's the Acheron shield or something. It's one of the shields. <laughs> I'm not sure which. I think it's the Acheron shield, though. Uh, essentially, buy these Acheron shields and sell them. I don't know if it's still the case, but every video you go to, you're like, how do I make money with sparks? I'll say, buy one of these shields. I think it's the Acheron one, though. And then sell it to an NPC, and you'll get uh, a bit more money, a bit more than 10 gil uh, spark or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, that's when you got enough sparks, and you might be like, Man, I only have 300 sparks. How the hell am I ever going to get enough sparks for this, let alone a lot? Well, don't worry. You're going to get tons of sparks as we go throughout the game. And like she said, we got to go to our quest menu and go through our objective list, because now it's just gotten even more crazy. All right, so we got things like synthesis, which you can go do these uh, guild master quests and stuff like that to learn crafting. Although I think most people say that crafting is very much a guild sink. Um, so kind of wait until you actually have money before doing these, but it is a nice way to kind of figure them out for the first time. Um, although I think, oh, none of these are, are fishing, but if you can do fishing or something like that, like any gathering, then that's probably fine. Uh, regardless though, we have certain quests here that are usually pretty useful, such as Mog House Exit. This allows you to exit any part, or go into a Mog House and exit any other part of any other Mog House. So speak to Oja. Uh, Rawash in Winder's Walls. So essentially, this entire Remnants of Eminence is a wiki. <laughs> it's a wiki with a reward system. So you don't have to go to the wiki page every time, like alt-tab out of the game or load up your phone and check how to do these quests. So the game is trying to get you to do quests that otherwise you wouldn't know without just clicking on every single NPC in the world, right? Or having to look up a guide or something like that. So the game is giving you an internal guide to walk you through the game and help you figure out your way in the world of Vanadil, which I think is wonderful. This is probably one of my favorite additions to the game. It is just perfect for new players, old players, anyone that is interested in getting into Final Fantasy XI. Records of Eminence is a must for enjoying the game even further, I find. Unless you have a ton of friends to go play Classic, but that's another story. Anyway. So we got the Mock House Exit Winders. We're just going to focus on Winders, not Sandoria, Bastok, Juno, or Ann Ergen. But when we get to those areas, we will definitely do that. Another thing is obtain a, a support job. Ah, you have to be level 18. I thought it was 20 earlier, but looks like it's 18. And you can go to the area of Selbina or Mora. We'll get to that at some point. And then you have to kill a certain amount of enemies as I face roll my keyboard, apparently. Uh, and then you'll be able to do this. But just we'll hold on to it for later. But we want to obtain an Alter Ego. We want to go talk to Watata, which we actually walked by earlier. Uh, but we need to be level 5 or higher to do this. But we're going to accept it anyway because it's pretty valuable. So we've undertaken, obtain an alter ego, Windurst. Chocobo license. Once you're level 20, you want to go to Juno. We can get a Chocobo license. We'll definitely do this at some point. Um, this will unlock the new version of the mount system. Uh, essentially, you'll be able to get uh, things that you can ride on, just like in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, stats on the mount don't matter. They've thrown all that shit out the window. I mean, you can still get it. For example, Chocobos, for example, uh, if you're riding your own personal Chocobo, um, you have two options. You can ride it as a mount, and a mount will have no stats whatsoever. Just run at full speed, wherever you want it to go. Um, or you can ride it as your own personal chocobo through a chocobo whistle. And depending on how you fed the chocobo and grew the chocobo, um, it'll get certain perks to running around the environment or digging up uh, items. Usually, you just want to level up as a digger, as far as, as I as far as I understand it now, and just uh, use the mount system for every other use. But regardless, you don't even need to worry about chocobos because it's a whole other thing, but we might get one at some point. Uh, depends on what you guys want to see. Uh, regardless, we also have new jobs. So if you're ever curious about how to unlock a specific job, here is your guide. <laughs> you just click on them. Hey, I want to be a puppet master. All right, well then go talk to this guy over in Bastock Markets, but you have to be level 30 to unlock it. And they have tons of jobs, even like Geomancer and Rune Fencer, which have been added. Uh, not too long ago. Well, I don't know. I say not too long ago. I think their most recent jobs, though, that, they, that they've they added. Because apparently I stutter over every word. All your artifact quests, when you hit a certain level, you'll be able to unlock the artifact gear for your job. Level cap increases, so you know exactly when you will be capped out and need to go figure out how to level that up beyond what it is, which is awesome. Uh, super, super useful. We'll definitely be using this. Storage expansion. This is also great. We have to go to Lower Juno. 
Uh, and we can expand our inventory. I highly recommend this. This is so valuable. It's unreal. It can go all the way up to 80. And then these are end game weapon skills. It's weird how this is under tutorial, but it, this is all valuable. So it's regardless, uh, pretty good. The most important thing though, missions, rhapsodies of Vanadil. Begin flames of power from any area adjoining a Mog House in one of the starting nations, but you must be at level three. Cool. And then we have missions, Windurst. Speak to the guard in front of the gatehouse and complete the Hirototo ruins experiment aligned with Windurst. Uh, and you can you can also um, unalign yourself with Windurst and go align with Bastok and go align with other people, but uh, I think you want to do one full country first, get that to max, and then if you're interested, maybe either make a new character or just switch to another re region and do all that crap. I think you do lose some of your uh, ranking when you drop a country. And there's all the expansion, so we're not gonna worry about that too much. I don't know much about those Adulin stuff, so if anyone knows about this stuff, let me know. Uh, but apparently if we do Seekers of Adulin, speak to Drakia or Darcia in Lower Juno, H7, and complete up the Arciella appears again. That sounds interesting. Definitely something down the line I want to check out. I know it's, gonna, it's a lot of explaining, but again, I, I want to go over it in case someone's interested in getting into the game, and I... This is my let's play. I do what I want. Whee! You know, something like that. Vanquish multiple enemies. I always set this up. This is repeatable, uh, but the first time completion is awesome. There's level sync to vanquish enemies. I think you level sync when you're in an alliance or in a party. So if you're level 99, but your your buddy just got the game. Sorry for bumping the mic. Uh, your buddy just got the game. Join his party. You can level sync with your best class. It'll just sync all your gear. Think of dungeons in Final Fantasy 14. You can sync down to whatever everyone else is for that dungeon, etc., etc. Uh, deal big damage. Uh, we will at some point, but not right now. Let's just do the easy ones. Deal 10 to 20 points of damage to an enemy the requisite number of times. Deal 110 to 120. Deal 310 to 320. Okay, we're not going to worry about the rest, though. That's going to be a little bit down the line. I think we can probably hit a 310, 320, like, really far down, but it's okay. I'm going to do total damage. Um, we will be able to do some healing. Total damage taken. That's a good one. Weapon skills, use weapon skills. Nice, nice, nice. Heal for 500 plus HP. We'll just wait until we can actually do that. <laughs> That's a huge heal, damn. Um, I think this also, heal either yourself or party or alliance member the requisite amount. Does this also include me just like resting? Okay, you know what, we'll just grab that. I don't remember. Uh, the spoils, that's right. Okay, so we'll need to pay attention to the spoils that we get from monsters, but I believe early on it's wind. Oops, not ice. Wind, fire, and earth. And maybe some lightning. And maybe some water. That's about it, really. And then there is very specific spoils from very specific monsters. Yeah, like bat wings. Oh, flintstone, rabbit hide, yeah. Flintstone, rabbit hide. And you can always just cancel these, but the first time completion really is the biggest thing here. Honey, absolutely. Uh, I don't think we run into any sheepskin nonsense. Trent bulbs. We might run across a Trent. I don't know. I'm just kind of going through these now. This is all interesting to me. Ooh, three leaf. Hell yeah. Three leaf, four leaf mandragora buds. We'll be playing those. Hey. Let me grab that one. <laughs> Wouldn't let me grab it. Yutanga sulfur. That's a little later. Oh, you good bead necklace. Cool. Beehive chip, sure. I know I'm just spamming my quest line with this stuff, but hey, worth. Combat regions. I think you have to actually find the combat regions first, unless I'm talking down my booty. I'm talking down my booty. Nope, not at all. I think we're good. Okay, once we once we find the area, then we unlock the regions. Ah, fishing, general. Yeah, do some fishing. Don't worry about crafting. Do some harvesting. That's fun. Uh, I don't even know, man. This is all this is all weird to me. I'm just going along with the wind, just like everyone else. I think we're good, though. Job levels. Oh, yeah. Red Mage 30. Nice. Perfect. Vaniversary. Okay, this stuff is weird. I don't know anything about this. Oh, I see. It's for the event. This is the 18th anniversary. Can we just do these? Participate in the battlefield. True love. Listen, I don't know. I don't know shit about that, okay? I'm sure it's cool, though. I'm sure you actually get some dank loot, too. That EXP, damn. And then daily objectives. Okay, so these things always change. 
Vanquish multiple enemies D. Defeat the requisite number of experience yielding enemies in non abyssal areas. That's just a nice thing to have. Not repeatable. Might as well do it. Buff your allies. I don't have those right now. And heal your, for 500 plus HP. Ugh, not happening. Then we have monthly objectives. Monthly, spin the special dial of the Gobby Mystery Box, the requisite number of times, special reward, 10 deeds of heroism. So, that one, I mean, I get it, but I don't know where to go hand that stuff in. And that's the one thing I will definitely have to search up for you guys. Okay, anyway, for now, we did it. I'm sorry, 200 minutes of checking this stuff out. Let's go talk to Salele. Greetings and well met, Protector of the Federation. Salele, at your most humble service. My station is to help along those new to life of an adventurer to Invanadil. I specialize in the types of fundamental knowledge necessary for success in such endeavors as well. I just jumped right crazy. As well as related methods of pedagogy. With my aid, uh, you can rest assured that your first steps down the adventurer's path will not go astray. Should you still consider yourself a newcomer, I would highly recommend that you make full use of my services. This is my permanent post, and I never leave it. Remember it well. Whenever you need a hand with anything, anything at all, don't hesitate to come calling. All right, cool. Uh, and then if you need to ask questions, I guess she's like a tutorial lady. So you are interested in some entry-level duties to put your, you well on your way to greatness. Not to worry, I've got just the thing for you. Go talk to the guard Hararara over there and have her cast Signet on you, then come back to me. Oh, we already have Signet. Well, it looks like you were able to get your Signet. Easy enough, yeah? As long as Signet is in effect, there is always a possibility that you will obtain crystals from any enemies that you defeat. There are also other more concrete benefits, such as increased defense and evasion. Ah, there you go. Signet can help... Uh, bleh. Signet even helps uh, you when not engaged in combat with an enemy. For example, it boosts the rate at which healing occurs while at rest. For all of these reasons and more, you should consider it essential to have Signet cast on you at all times. Very well then, as a reward for successful completion of your first assignment, I would like to present you with these strips of meat jerky. There is more here than meets the eye, winky face. That was a joke. Anyway, this is a type of item known amongst adventurers as a meal. This meal in particular will temporarily enhance your attack power when eaten. Whenever any type of meal is consumed, you will receive some such temporary status bonus. Naturally, different meals grant different types of bonuses. For the most part, meat dishes will affect attack power. Conversely, seafood dishes generally enhance defense, and so on and so forth. One thing you should make note of, however, is that you cannot eat a meal while another meal's status bonus is still in effect. Your stomach would simply burst. Hmm? That's quite a lot to cover. Are you with me so far? This is a breeze. Great. Well, talking can only prepare you so much. Let's go right down to it. Go ahead and eat one of those meat jerkies. After eating a meal, a status icon will appear on the top of the screen. All right. Kind of a waste, but whatever. All right, you obtained six strips. But we have 12? I must have gotten uh, a few more earlier. All right, cool. Check out the full belly on you. Well done. Signet and Meals can both play crucial roles whenever you take on any type of enemy. This is a key lesson that you would do well not to forget. Next, let's get those pristine hands of yours nice and dirty. No sense in letting that food go to waste, is there? Let's send you out uh, to fight a monster on a full stomach. Exiting through the gate over there will lead you into an area with hostile enemies. Try to target one of the monsters and then select the check option from your menu. This will help you ascertain an enemy's level of difficulty and make sure they are not too strong. A smart adventurer picks his fights, uh, picks his fights. Be warned, engaging an enemy that checks as very tough or above will result in your signet not granting you the defense bonus. And that brings us to your next assignment. It's high time you learned how to use a weapon skill. Perhaps you've already noticed, but sometimes while fighting an enemy, your skills will rise a little by little. When your skill with the weapon you are wielding reaches a predetermined value, weapon skills will become available for use. Combo for those adept with hand-to-hand -hand weapons, wasp sting for those who fight with daggers, and fast blade for those who prefer a sword. Shining strike for wielders of the club, 
heavy swing for those who take up the staff, and on and on and on. Selecting status from the menu will bring up the combat skill option. This display this will display all of your current skills learned with the weapon. The first five skill for each weapon type can be learned at a skill value of five. Sorry, the first weapon skill will be at five. So make sure your first skill and we'll take it up from there. Okay, so now we gotta get level five on our weapon. Uh, we could absolutely go get our trust, which would help us significantly, but because we don't have a trust right now, we can actually fight enemies uh, more mono y mono, and we'll level up really fast, which is nice. And uh, start accruing some points and things like that, which would be very, very nice for us. So here is Saruta Baruta, looking pretty smexy. We got a field manual here, and we're gonna click on it because this will allow us to do individual training. And because we're plebs, we're going to do page one, which is probably just bugs or Mandragora. Sure, we'll fight Mandragora, no problem. But we'll still fight bees, just because the bees. I don't even know what that guy's doing. I guess he's just leveling something. Um, <laughs> it's so distracting. Uh, the bees will drop beehive chips and honey. So probably better to fight a bee, but Mandragora are cool too, because we still need the Mandragora buds, which are a little bit more random. So right now, if we select ourselves, you can see that we have magic, Daya, and we can actually set up our hotkeys. Uh, this game's a little bit different. You have to actually manually program your character's abilities. So we'll set the left trigger to this. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. And then we'll cast Daya. Excellent. Got him. Do we get any points? We got our evasion up, but we didn't level our white magic. That's sad. Oh, well. I don't even think we gave him Daya there. <laughs> Usually, it would say, I think, if he gets affected by it. But we're already doing decent damage. We have a shitty dagger, unfortunately, but what can you do? You may notice the first enemy we killed is, in fact, leveling us up to level 2. We don't even have any EXP boost or anything. Which is so sick! You can get level 99 really fast in this game, but again, when we're focusing on the story, it's more, more fun anyway. All we gotta do is just hope that our dagger skill gets all the way up to level 5. Which will probably get us level 10,000 by the time we actually get there. Our vanquished multiple enemies is going downhill again. Now, it does say multiple enemies, so it might mean that we need to kill a bunch of different types of enemies. I gotta make sure I'm casting Daya, by the way. Alright, let's see. Enfeebling finally levels. This means I might have gotten it. Are you affected by Daya, bud? Daya is supposed to be like a uh, dot. Lowers an enemy's defense and gradually deals light elemental damage. Yeah. So as you can see, we're not really be f being flooded with a bunch of uh, information on the left as you would be if you have all that crazy nonsense going on. Oh God. All right, well here's uh, the treasure casket system. If it's brown, then it's, an a re it's a real item, but they're difficult to get. And if it's blue, then it's a temporary item for that area alone. So if you move to another area, your temporary items get white. Uh, but you're free to use them, you can't sell them, so you might as well pick a blue chest and they're not difficult to do. Um, this chest usually are five or six chances. I've never seen four or seven, but you know, what do I know? Uh, and we can examine the lock, which uses one of your chances. Um, that one of the two digits is six. So that's not particularly informative, but okay. We'll attempt to unlock it, and we'll enter a combination. Let's do 66. Get that out of the way. It is less than 66, which means that it's the second number. Oh, oh god, as I apparently selected myself and went into my chat. That's always how it goes. Alright, attempt to unlock. I'm probably not going to get this one, but if I do, that would be great. Let's do, I don't know, 46. Less than 46, all right. We'll try 36, 26, and 16 are the last ones, but we only have a uh, 66% chance of actually succeeding here. Uh, so we'll do 26 right in the middle. And if it's higher, it's 36. If it's lower, it's 16. Oh, there you go. We got it. Easy. It's a good thing we check 66 first. Yeah, to click it again, because of course. And then, uh, you get a pair of mitts. Nice. So level eight, we'll have some mittens. We didn't have to pay anything for that, even though usually you don't. You, you spend, uh, sparks for the stuff. And a brass cap. Aw. Excellent. We got a hat. We're cool. Uh, unfortunately, they go into your inventory, but hey, it is what it is. Gonna keep murdering the Mandragora. 
And the reason we want to do this book, it'll give us an EXP boost, but then we can also spend these points that we're earning uh, on buffs so we can give ourselves stuff like Protect or even Refresh so we can refresh our mana uh, over a period of time. It's really, really nice, very convenient. Um, people can even down sync or whatever and just do a sync party all the way up to max level in uh, some pretty Alliance-heavy areas. It's, it's some cool stuff. Really, the game's all about trying to get you to max level as fast as possible, which is a far cry from what it used to be. And I know a lot of people do love the, the leveling aspect of the original version of Final Fantasy XI, which I don't blame them because that shit was fun. It was, it was grueling, it was difficult, it was painful. It was just insane, right? And uh, I enjoyed it. I really did. Uh, I never really got max level, but I enjoyed the time I spent with the people that I played with. Uh, and it was an absolute blast. If you have buddies to go play with, then I highly recommend check out a private server uh, for that stuff. But I can't really say how much, or, or I can't really say I don't dislike this current system. I like the idea of being able to level whatever class I want to comfortably go through the entire game uh, without having to worry too much about finding a party um, and then even focusing on endgame content with uh, with people at that point uh, with more endgame focus. Uh, it seems relatively okay with me. And with the syncing system, you can just sync with your buddies. Uh, this is Silent Oil. It's not really useful, so we're not going to use it. Uh, Silent Oil is nice for evading certain monsters that can smell you, uh, or, or that can hear you. There's a deodorant that you use for monsters that can smell you. There's typically three different ways uh, for enemies to detect you. One thing that's nice, if we go into items here, you'll see Remedy. It's like a yellow, or a, it's not yellow, but more orange color. That just means it's in a separate inventory space. Uh, essentially, the temporary items do not take up any of your actual inventory, so you're totally safe in picking that stuff up. Super, super nice, very convenient. I also believe there's another- is there another treasure chest right there that we dropped? Jesus. Can't say I'll be lucky twice, to be honest. We still don't have our uh, dagger leveled up just yet. Funny, funny enough, though, like, we're really not going to worry too much about our dagger. We're going to try and switch it out to a sword. Because uh, the, the typical red mage, I think, goes for a sword and shield, right? I don't know. Examine the luck. Um, one of the two digits is four. All right, let's do 44. I think that's the right choice, right? To always just go for 44. Enter the combination. 44. We're actually, uh, our brains are gigantic. I think that's what we've learned today. Ah, beast coin. I don't really know what they do. <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff I don't know what they do. Oh, cool. More uh, level 8 gear. Sweet. Who's going to get all our level 8 gear through fighting uh, low-level mobs? This is great. How are we doing on items, by the way? Uh, we already got one honey. So I think we still need one more honey, and then we need some beehive chips. Uh, what some players actually really like to do, uh, at least back in the day, is actually do a little slash party uh, shout whenever they are casting a certain spell. Uh, and this is usually pretty good for doing magic skill chains and weapon skill chains. So if you tell everyone in the party that, hey, I'm doing a weapon skill, which is tied to your TP system, uh, essentially, you don't start with TP, you gain TP through taking hits and giving hits out. Um, and as you can see right now, we're at 2,645 TP. You can see it under my name on the bottom right. Oh my god, another one? Oh man, I remember this song. This song was made, like, back in Xylart days. Um, oh man, I used to go fishing all the time listening to this song. Anyway, <laughs> examine the luck. Uh, the second digit is a 3, 4, or 5. Well, that makes it a little bit more difficult. I guess we'll do 53 and see if it's lower or higher. Uh, enter a combination. I know I don't have to do this for all these, but I kind of like to. Oh, it's this early on. It is greater than 53. All right, let's try 63. Let's see how we're looking. Interesting. So it's... We, we nailed it, because it's going to be... Uh... Hold on, hold on. 
It's going to end with a three, four, or five. So it's either 54 or 55. Nice. Oh my god. Are we going to get three in a row then? Yeah, 54. Let's do 54. It's 55. Wow. What can I say, guys? Our brain is the biggest in the world. They call me the code cracker, really. Got a pile chain, which is a level 3 HP of inaccuracy. Oh my god, dude. Okay, well, apparently we are the luckiest human beings on the planet. We got another brass cap, which we'll just sell for some gil. Hey, I'm not complaining. I'm a big fan. <laughs> oh, man. It's like Square Enix dev is watching me. He's like, here, I'll just drop this little newbie some easy combinations real quick. Uh, where's my necklace? There it is. Accuracy plus one and HP plus three on the pile chain. Hell yes, thank you. Dude, what a win. Or dude, this is like the best character ever already. Top tier. Easy. So rings and like necklaces and stuff like that usually are not things you can get with sparks as far as I understand it. It's usually just weapons, shields, um, I think maybe bows. Maybe. That's a big maybe. Uh, any class in the game can use a bow and arrow. Or, well, not any class. I should say any class can use a ranged weapon. Whether that's throwing stones, or shooting a bow and arrow, or shooting a crossbow, or whatever. Any class can do it. It's like a fluid system of ranged weapons, I guess you could say. Which is pretty cool. Um, which gives everyone a viable pulling strat, which is super valuable back in the day when it comes to uh, pulling a smaller group of monsters rather than a shitload. And obviously when we're out here soloing, like, it, it is faster to level uh, with trusts, which are basically NPCs that join you in your party and they fight with you, but since we're trying to level a weapon skill, it's not necessary. Not necessary in the slightest. How are we doing on our progression here? Not sure if we already vanquished the Mandragora necessary, but, you know, I should learn to keep track of this stuff. I think we're almost at 10 Earth Crystals, though. We do gotta be careful when we are casting. Uh, you can absolutely be knocked out of your casts. It's very easy to be interrupted. So we just finished the Records of Eminence objective, deal 10 to 20 damage, which is awesome. And we just unlocked Wasp Sting, so we just completed our uh, quest there. Let's kill another tiny Mandragora. And we'll do our weapon skill, which is Poison's target, duration varies with TP. So damage does not vary, but your uh, the, the overtime stuff does, apparently. I don't know if damage actually does. Anyone that knows more about the game, do let me know. I guess the Vanquish multiple enemies thing, though, is pretty straightforward, eh? Uh, oh, there we go. We got our 27 tabs for doing 6 of 6 Mandagore. Perfect timing. Excellent. All right, let's just beat the crap out of this guy. And while we're doing that, let's go into our macros. And we will set up a weapon skill called Wasp Sting, even though this will be temporary. And we just do slash WS or weapon skill. And then since it's two words, we have to string it together with quotations and then we'll do target. And then I could do like uh, stingy, wingy, I'm a wasp stingy. And I hit the tab button there. And then I'll actually write down the name that I'm currently targeting. And that way, anyone that speaks any language will know that I am using wasp sting. And it's only really important if, uh, <laughs> it's only important if you're in a party with human beings and uh, you guys are planning to do weapon skill chains and stuff like that. And weapon skill chains is god tier. Like, it's so much damage. It's disgusting how much damage you can do. It's insane. I think we might get a cutscene now that I think about it going into Windurst. About something else going on in the world, possibly. Oh. I hope not. I knew it. The crystal resonates deep within your soul. All right, we're stuck in for a little bit.
I believe this is because we got level five. Final Fantasy XIV players might recognize this lady as she's in a lot of the events. Or some of them, anyway. Or exactly one of them. Whatever. Benadiel, in the year 898. I must make haste for Ryzenjima and find the master before... Rhapsodies of Benadiel. So we have now initiated the main story quest line. Excellent. We did it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're as excited as I am to get into Rhapsody's Vanadeal. And this is going to be a ton of fun. I'll see you guys next time. You take it easy.